What's up, Tech Harders? Are you guys ready to build with me an awesome torrent stack server? What's a torrent stack server, dude? Well, you know you got Qubit Torrent on your laptop and you probably have it behind a VPN and you search for stuff in there and download a movie or three, maybe a Linux ISO file. But let's build something a little more broad, a little more powerful, and a little more automated. Come on along, man. This is going to be a good 2025 how-to. Let's make a torrent stack with Docker, baby. I'll meet you in the computer. Come on. Ah okay, my friends, let's talk about what our torrent server will consist of. First, we'll be using Homar. It's a dashboard, a central place where we'll access all of the different parts of our torrent stack. We're going to be using Private Internet Access, the PIA Qubit Torrent Docker project. It's really cool. It gives you a Qubit Torrent torrenting software, all behind PIA VPN, and so you never have to worry about leaking your IP. Then we're going to use Overseer. Overseer is mostly used for people that have Plex servers, and I do. It will scan your entire Plex library and then give you suggestions of movies and series that you may like. When you select a movie that you want, it'll send that information over to Radar and Sonar, which we'll talk about in a minute. The third part of our stack is Prowlar. Prowlar will be where we search for different torrents that we want to download. We'll select a bunch of public indexers and Prowlar will search for any torrents that we want. For movie downloads, we'll be using Radar. Radar will take care of all of our movies. Sonar is the same thing, except it's for television series. All of our public indexers from Prowlar will be the engine that lets Radar and Sonar download suggestions that Overseer sends our way. So that's going to be our torrent stack. I'm going to use my Proxmox server. I'll make a container that I'll use. If you have a different system, and you already have Debian or your OS of choice installed and ready to go, just go down there to the video bar and select the next section. However, I'm going to be using Proxmox. I'm going to go to its shell. And then I'm going to use another project. It's called the Proxmox Helper Scripts. Uh, I'll go down here and click on Operating Systems. And we want the Debian LXC, which is a container instead of a full VM. So we're nice and light. So we'll copy this command right here. Now, one important thing. You want to use your Proxmox shell here in the web GUI. This won't work if you SSH into your Proxmox. You want to put this command right here in the web GUI shell of your Proxmox server. There's that command, and I'll press Enter. And this will create a new Debian LXC. I'm going to click yes. For the keen eye of you out there, you might already notice I have a PDE 104 called Torrent Stack. And that is my Torrent Stack server. I'm not going to select the default settings. I'll go advanced just so if there's anything I want to change. To make a selection, we'll use the space bar. Okay. We're going to do Debian 12. So I'll push space bar on Debian. I want 12, so I'll select 12. I'm going to go with unprivileged and I'll set a root password. You can select whatever container ID you want. That's fine for me. And I'm going to set the host name to YouTube Torrent. Now for your disk size, you'll have to choose if you want to make this really large to store all of your torrent data. But mine is through a NAS share. So I don't need that much. I'll just set it at 256. This is a pretty beefy server, so I'm going to give it four CPUs. And I'll give it eight gigabytes of RAM. Enable root SSH. No, not now. And enable verbose mode. I'll say yes. I just want to see everything I can. And are we ready to create this container? Let's go! For my container template, I'm going to save that to local. But for the actual container, I'm going to go with storage 2. If you have Proxmox, you'll know where you want to select yours. Go ahead. And when that's done, you'll see over here, you have a new container. All right, so let's jump into that VM. We'll go to the console on YouTube Torrent. And we can log in with root and our password. Probably shouldn't be poking around as root. Let's do an add user, and I'll call it Torrent. Give that a password.
Then we'll do a user mod dash a capital G sudo on the torrent user. Do we have sudo? Sure. Let's sue over to that torrent user and we'll do it. Oops, we'll go to our directory and we'll do a sudo ls. Okay, so we have sudo access. Now we can exit out and we'll log in as that torrent user. First things first, we're going to need Docker and Docker Compose. I have a cheat sheet over here, but I'll show you a really easy way to install both of those on Debian 12. First, for Docker, we can just do an apt update. We'll need sudo now. And sudo apt install docker.io. This is a lot easier than adding the Docker repos to get the basic Docker, and it works the same. I have a curl command over here that'll pull down Docker Compose for us. So I'm going to copy that in here. Oops, I need sudo again because I'm not the root user. And then we'll do a sudo chmod plus x. I think it's in user, local, bin, and then Docker Compose. So if we clear that, now we can do a docker dash dash version and a docker compose, and we have both. We're ready to go! We're using private internet access qubit torrent docker. And I know that we'll have to clone this repo. So I'm going to grab that, go back here, and let's do a git clone on that repo. And I move into this directory. Let's get rid of some of this stuff we don't need. We don't need anything with the Docker file. We don't need the license. We don't need the big readme. We don't even need qubittorrent.conf. And we'll remove that directory of readme. There. We have our docker compose.yaml and two scripts that are sometimes used. I'm going to edit this file. You'll have to select a region. I like Canada, Vancouver. You'll have to set your config and downloads folder. Now, if you're using a NAS or an NFS share or some kind of share where you keep your qubit torrent files, you could change this slash period slash downloads to, you know, slash MNT and wherever you mount it. But I'm just going to leave it here for this video. I'm also going to add my user and password, but I'm not going to share that with you. Now we could just run a docker compose up dash D. We're not sudo anymore. Let's do a sudo user mod dash A G the docker group for our user. Oops, torrent. I think we'll have to exit and re-log in. We can test is we'll just type docker ps. So yeah, we have docker access now. We'll move into that directory and we'll try that again. Docker compose up D. And this will pull down PIA qubit torrent. Now if we do a docker ps, we can see that it's running at port 8888. If you saw the little pop-up earlier where I mentioned make sure you create a privileged container, if you didn't create a privileged container, it wouldn't be able to access the tune interface nor attach to these ports. Ask me how I know, bro. So we're live. Uh, we can do an IPA and find out that we're at 10.0.0.156. There we go. One other little secret. If we come back here and I'm going to type docker logs on PIA qubit torrent. We'll see down here, the web UI administrator username is admin and the password is a temporary that you can copy right here. So just grab that temporary password, jump back over and you can log. You can log in with admin and that password. We'll make sure to go to tools, options, web UI and change that password.
In fact, I'm going to change the username so it matches all my other services too. There's Qubit Torrent running and ready to roll. Let's get all of our R's running, all of our helper apps. I'm going to add all those in one Docker Compose file. So I'm just going to say R's, make directory R's. I'm going to move into it and I'll edit docker-compose.yaml. First of all, I think this is home R. Yeah. So you go to homer.dev slash docs slash getting started slash installation and you'll find this docker compose.yaml. Let's grab it. We'll go back to that system over there. We'll just paste that text in like so. Then we'll head to the overseer website and grab the docker compose info again and paste it down below. Okay, we'll paste that in. That looks good. Let's go to time zone, and I'm going to change this to America slash Los Angeles, baby. Now, notice here it wants us to give a path. So we want overseer. We'll put a period. So that'll be, you know, ars slash overseer slash config. That's fine. We can move on to the next thing. Prowlar. Let's go back here. And since I know Linux server has everything we need, I'm just going to erase this and type in Prowlar. Go right down, gonna grab everything up to the service up to the services line. Boom. Let's add that in. Again, we're gonna check this stuff. We'll change the time zone. America. And we need to erase this too and put a period. So that'll make a slash prowlr data directory. I'm fine with that. Now up for radar. I know Linux server has us on that too. So I'm just gonna type in radar and go grab this one. And I'll do the same for sonar. Let me grab the rest of these. The reason I added those be both before editing, I want to point something out. I'm going to change the two time zones first. For the data or config folder, we'll make a period slash radar. But on movies, and downloads again if you are using a nas you could point this to your movie files this to your qubit torrent downloads or downloads and you could point this one to your tv series or your tv folder and then again the same downloads as above since i'm just using this video i'm going to put these in period slash sonar slash downloads and here i'll put these in period slash sonar slash TV series. And here I just add a period and then I'll make a data. So I'm going to add all of these into a ours slash sonar directory and the same up here. But these are the locations that you would send to your NFS or your NAS or whatever mount you wanted to use for your data. Okay, so that looks all good. We have our one, two, three, four, five helper apps, Homar, Overseer, Prowler, Radar, and Sonar. Let's get those booted. Okay, we can do a Docker PS and see Qubit Torrent running. Let's run a Docker Compose up dash D and it'll pull down all those things and let's see if they all boot up okay. Everybody loves some Matrix Rain. 
Okay, and now if we put a Docker PS, we can see all six things running. There's your stack. See y'all later. No. Let's get everything set up so we have automatic download suggestions that come from our Plex library. Let's automatically download movies and TV series and let's have a great search engine. We can start with Homar because that's our dashboard. What was our IP? 10.156. Okay, 156. So Homar runs on port 7575. So let's go over to 10, 00, 156, 75, 75. I'll click to start the update and we'll make a username and password. Okay, I'm gonna go right to your board and this is Homar. I'm gonna quickly edit this and get rid of all these extra things we don't need. And let's get started on our Homar dashboard. I'll click add a tile and apps. This is for qubit torrent. Notice if you use like the app name, it automatically pulls the right icon. So here we're going to be HTTP slash slash 10.0.0.156 and BitTorrent is at port 8888. Put the same HTTP for the external address. You could expose this to the internet, but I'm not going to go over that today. Go to integration and find Qubit Torrent. You'll have to give it your Qubit Torrent username and password. So make sure you do that. And click the Save button. You can make that a little bit bigger. Let's add another. This one will be for Overseer. So the same HTTP 156. Forget what Overseer was. Overseer is at 5055. We'll add that here too. We can go to integration and select Overseer. Ooh, it's gonna want an API, so let's open that. Go to the port and click sign in and you'll sign in to your Plex account. Now I have a trick. I don't want to sign in to my Plex account here because I'm already signed in with my other Overseer app. So I'm going to do a little cheating here and I'm just going to use the other one that's running on my network. But once you sign in, you'll see this exact same screen, maybe different suggestions after it scans your Plex library, and go to Settings, and grab this API key right here. Go back to Homar, and you'll paste that in, and click Save. Since I'm cheating, I need to go back and update this port number, because I'm using my other Docker container but it'll allow the video to go on. We'll save that. Drag that down over here. Put it wherever you want it. Okay, now we're gonna add Prowlar. Your local IP and what port is Prowlar on? See, Prowlar is 96.96. So just add that in on both of these. 96.96. And we'll go over to integration and add Prowlar. There it is. It wants an API key. Okay. So we'll go to your local IP port 9696. We have to make a user account, so I'll use forms login page. 
and I'll make my username and password. Okay, then you can go to settings, uh, general, and you'll grab this API key. API key. Note, this VM will be deleted before this video is ever on YouTube. Paste in your API key. And Bob's your uncle, baby. Oh, this isn't going to be nice to me. I'll have to, I'll have to change the size of all these later. Okay, add another tile. And we're going to do radar and sonar. Sonar's port. Radar is 7878. So just type that in on both of these locations here. And do the integration. It wants the API key. Just port. Port 7878. Okay, we'll have to make a username here. Same thing. Settings. General. API key. API key. Add one for sonar. Sonar is eighty nine eighty nine. Integration for sonar, boom, API key. Set up your user. And settings general. API key. OK, once you save that, you can move sonar down here. Make it however big you want it. I'm just going to move those up, keep everything clean. There's a lot of options for Homar. You can go to dark mode. You can change all the settings. You can change this text up here. Um, I think that's in the customized board in some other locations. Go right to a dark theme. I prefer that. You can add other, let me show you, add a tile. You can add different widgets. And some can tie into, like, say you had a Proxmox server, you can get the stats from that or different things and follow your torrents. But Homer's powerful. You can dig in a lot more than just this. So let me explain why we're using this stack. First of all, Homer is the dashboard. We don't want to click in web pages or, or IPs or even DNS names every time we want to move around. So this ties in the stack all in one place. Qubit Torrent is the downloader. It's the engine. It's the thing that goes in does the torrenting, and seeds for you. Overseer reads your Plex library and makes suggestions of movies or TV series that you might like. Prowlr does searches if you're saying, I want to find this Linux ISO. It'll go out and search different indexers for you. Radar handles movie requests and downloading movies. Overseer will send your request to Radar or Sonar. They'll use Qubit Torrent to automatically download them. Okay, so we're going to need to do a lot of setup though. First things, let's jump in Overseer. I'll just save this. So we'll click on Overseer. Now remember, mine's already set up, so that's no big deal, but I'll already have the settings here. But you'll go into Settings, 
And I think it's in services. Yeah. So in services, you want to connect radar and sonar here. So you click add radar server. You can select it as your default server. If you want it to be 4K, I don't. And then you type in, this can be radar, and we're at 10.0.0.156 or your public IP. And it already knows it's port 7878. You'll have to go copy your API key, just like we did a minute ago. Go into radar. You log in. Go to Settings General and grab your API key. Go back into Overseer and paste it. And Bob's your uncle. What you can do, though, is click Test. And you'll see it successfully tested. You can do different quality profiles down here. I like 1080p. You can select a root folder and all of your stuff here. Here's my NAS where I mounted in Overseer. And there's Movies 1. That's where it's saved for radar. That's where my NAS is. We can get Prowlar set up. Prowlar allows you to use public indexers. That's really cool because radar and sonar need somewhere to get their data from or to search for it. And while there are private indexers, you have to be a good torrenter and get into the community. I can put on screen some sites and Reddit forums where you can find private indexers, but to start going through all the public ones is a good way to do it. The red icons are public. You'll have to look because a lot you won't want. Some are adult and whatnot. But here, 1337X is a good one, so I'll click it. It's public. You'll select a base URL and a seed ratio. I'll do 1.6. And then you want to test the connection. For me, 1337 doesn't work great. I think it might be behind a, uh, a Cloudflare tunnel that doesn't like me. Um, so none of these work for me. So anyway, you're going to test. And if it's good, save it. If not, move on to the next one. And like I said, you'll have to find ones that are, interest you. Let's find a couple that I can add here, though. I'm looking for the red icons. Here we go, Badass Torrents. I know this one's pretty good. Click the base URL and a seed ratio of 1 to 6. I'm going to test. And there you go, we got a green check, so save that one. Now you're going to want to go through all of these, but I'll just find one more. Big fan group. Select the base URL and a seed ratio, and make sure you run the test. Get a green check mark, save it. And you're going to want to go through all of these, and you'll end up with about 25 or 30. But for this video, adding two is fine. Are there any other settings? Let's go in here. Let's go to download clients. We're going to add our Qubit Torrent instance. So Prowlar has a way to download. So for the host, we'll type 10.0.0.156, and we have to change the port to 8888. You'll give it your username and password. And you can see if you want to change anything else. Make sure you test it. You'll get a green arrow and save that. Now Prowlar can talk with your Qubit Torrent. In the Applications section, we're going to want to add Radar and Sonar so that Radar and Sonar can use the public indexers from Prowlar. So you'll just click on Radar. Here at localhost, you'll change that to your public IP. For us, it's 156. And for Radar, same thing. 
and then it wants the API key from radar. All right, so we're up there. Let's go here. We'll open radar. Get that API key. And we'll give it to Prowler. We're going to test. Green arrow, save. Okay, let's do the same for sonar. And it wants the sonar API key. Settings, general, grab that key, paste that key, test the connection, green arrow, save. Okay, so now Prowler has access to the applications radar and sonar, and it can talk with Qubit Torrent, and you've went through all the indexers and have about 25 or 30 here. You can test all indexers sync app indexers. Okay, so that was Prowlar's setup. Let's go to Radar. You can go into System and it'll tell you any issues. So we don't have any download client. Let's edit that. We'll add Qubit Torrent. Same thing, you're getting it now, right? Change the port to 8888. Sure it has the user. And go through for any other settings, test the connection, save, and there you go. Now for indexers, you can see the two that I added are now here. You can also add private indexers, but if you're new, you probably won't have these yet. There's Qubit Torrent. So we're looking all right. Now let's go over to Sonar. We'll do the same. Go to system, no download client is available. Let's change that. We'll give it qubit torrent. Port 8888. Username and password. Test the connection. Save that bad boy. Oh yeah. For indexers, you can see the ones from Qubit Tor or from, I'm sorry, Prowler. So now that Sonar has indexers and a download client, we're looking pretty good. If you go to system and status, you can see your mounted uh, file areas. And this is why it's a good idea to add one of your NAS mounts, mount it to TV or TV2, and then you can save your downloaded files to those disks. But at any rate, Sonar is looking good. And now I'll just show you how a couple things might work. You'd use Prowlar if you just want to search for something. Like I need the Debian 12 ISO. So Prowlar will use your indexers to search. Now I only added two indexers, but you get the idea. You go to Overseer and this has access to your Plex account. So it literally gives you suggestions that you might like. If you select something, they'll download. For example, I selected Breaking Bad, Don't Look Up, Rebel Ridge. So let me go over to my actual Qubit Torrent. And you can see those. Here's my downloads. And that came just by clicking an Overseer. And so that's my stack and I'm sticking to it. I've been amazed at how good Overseer suggests things to me and how quickly if I just tap goes to three other services and how well they work. This is all with public indexers. Once I get some private ones under, under my belt, I think it'll be even better. All right, guys, I hope you have fun building a stack and let me know how I can improve on it or do better. I'll catch you on the next one. Tech hard.